What's going on everyone? Welcome to the Pokey Office. My name is Colin. Today's video we're talking about whether or not the Pokemon company cares about collectors and investors in the Pokemon hobby. My short answer is no. But before we get into all of it, I got a giveaway going on right now. So I just hit 7,000 subscribers. Uh, thank you all so much. It really means the world to me. This is what I'm giving away. A Scarlet and Violet 151 Ultra Premium Collection to one lucky subscriber. So if you want to be entered to win that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel with bell notifications on. Hit the like button. Leave a comment letting me know what you think about this topic. Pokemon Company, do they care about collectors and investors? I said my short answer is no, but let's back up a little bit. I just watched one of the newer videos from PokeOz. Shout out to him. Uh, crushing it on YouTube right now. I love his stuff. Um, so make sure to go check out his video. I'll link it down below in the description as well. He was talking about um, organic collectability versus uh, manufactured scarcity. So organic collectability, something like his two examples were like a sword uh, from the Spanish conquest of the South Americas. Like never intended to be worth lots of money. It was intended to do its job of being a sword. Or like I think his other example was uh, the king's table uh, from like the 1500s or something like that from Britain. And so that table was never intended to be worth tons of money. It was just intended for the king to be able to eat his food at. But now if you're a collector of like furniture or of swords or like anything like that, those things could be worth huge money. So it brings into question, was Pokemon ever intended to be worth like, think about a base set booster box with the first edition stamp on it. It's worth like hundreds of thousands. At one point, I think it was getting close to like a million dollars. And I don't think Pokemon Company, whether it was Wizards of the Coast or Pokemon Company, like, did they intend for their first edition base set booster box to be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars? I don't really think so. I think they probably had plans for it to be, like, worth something because, I mean, they put a first edition stamp on it and they distributed it. At, but I think they fully intended those booster boxes to be opened for kids to play with it's called a trading game for goodness sake so like these cards are supposed to be traded played with and it's actually a card game that you're like playing and like i think that's where pokemon company is still focused on today is the playability of the card game so like we're seeing them print stuff and print stuff and print stuff um so like i just don't see how they care that much about collectability um or investors. I think specifically the investor part, I don't think Pokemon cares about one bit. But here's where the other part of the Pokeoz video comes in. He talks about uh, manufactured scarcity. So his example was the uh, Celebrations Ultra Premium Collection. And basically what happened, I wasn't even part of the hobby before like this happened. I got in kind of right after Celebrations. But what I've heard happened is that Pokemon Company comes out with this really cool product with like the gold Charizard from base set, the gold Pikachu from base set, the metal cards, and then like the celebrations was a big thing. And then they come out with this ultra premium collection and they're saying, we're only going to print so many of them, uh, get it while it's hot. So maybe that's a collectability, I guess, right? Because uh, they're kind of like manufacturing this, we're only going to print this much, so if you don't get it now... Uh, you might not get it. We're seeing the same thing right now with this classic collection. And I'm a sucker for it. So I have the English one and I bought the decks. If you've been watching the channel, I opened all three decks on the channel uh, to send into PSA. But uh, like supposedly they're making this huge MSRP for this product. And I guess it's a collector's item. But who knows? Like that's where we're coming into the investment side and where if I bought this thing, I paid like close to MSRP for the English classic collection. So it was, I don't know, 450 American or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Anyways, if I want that to be an investment, I have to see this thing. Like if I want it to double in price, first of all, I have to see this thing grow from 450 to $900. And then I have to find someone to actually pay me $900 for it in order to see that investment turn out. Like that's kind of crazy. So anyways, I'll uh, let you go watch the Pokeoz video. It's down below in the description, like I said. But it's a really interesting talk on like uh, organic um, collectability versus manufactured scarcity. 
but let's fast forward a little bit now. We're into Sword and Shield era and into Scarlet and Violet era. And seemingly, Pokemon just is in the business of making money. That's what it feels like to me. Feels like whatever they do, they are in the business of making money. They recognize that Pokemon is a total cash cow, especially through that COVID like collectability boom. And now it's just like, if people are buying this stuff, we're going to print it and we're going to keep printing it and we're going to keep printing it. We've seen it a few times with the unicorn of the room being Evolving Skies where it was reprinted so much and yet the values of things still stayed high. Like you take a look at the Moonbreon VMAX and that card is still a crazy, crazy price for how many are in existence. Like the pop report for PSA 10s is huge. I don't have the exact number in front of me right now, but there's tons of those cards. Um, but you see the reprints happening. Like we just saw Lost Origin and Silver Tempest get reprinted. Those cards are coming down. The booster boxes are coming down. We see Crown Zenith get completely owned by reprints. Lots of those cards were so cool, like the Gold Giratina Arceus, the Mewtwo V-Star. Uh, such cool cards, and they've really kind of tanked in price. Crown Zenith Elite Trainer Boxes, the Booster Bundles, all are quite low in price. So it just feels like Pokemon Company, oh, people are liking Crown Zenith? Let's print more of it and get it in the hands of people because they're buying it, so we're going to cash in on this opportunity. Um, so changing perspectives a little bit, I want to talk about like Pokemon clearly does care about collectability to some extent because why else would you have alternate artwork cards? Why else would you have illustration rare, special illustration rare cards? Like I get it. They have to care about collectability to some extent. Otherwise, it's just not really going to work. Um, so that's an interesting point because, I mean, we see old sets in Sword and Shield. We saw Chilling Rain have some amazing artworks, the Blaziken VMAX, the Glarian Moltres, the Gold Snorlax. Then we see Evolving Skies, which has like literally so many amazing artworks, all the Evolutions, also the Dragonite, and then the VMAX secret rares as well. But all into uh, the later sets of Sword and Shield, like Brilliant Stars had the, the Charizard alt art. Uh, Lost Origin had the Giratina alt art, Lugia alt art from Silver Tempest. I'm missing the Machamp alt art from uh, Astral Radiance. And then the Trainer Gallery cards. Like, these cards wouldn't exist if people didn't like the collectability aspect of Pokemon. Otherwise, if it was just the card game, they would just print those, like, main cards to play in the card game. So, there's some aspect of it, but then we turn and flip the switch to the investment side of it, and it's like, well... Pokemon Company wants to cash in. Pokemon Company wants everyone to have access to these cards to play the actual TCG. So we don't really care whether you paid $100 for this card or $50 for this card or whether it's worth $300 or whether it's worth $100. We're just going to print it and it probably is going to bring the value down, but then it doesn't matter because we want people to have access to these booster packs to open to play the game. So that's my perspective. Like I have no actual proof of this. It's just what I'm seeing in the market pra marketplace. Um, just always feels like Pokemon is in it for the cash. And some of these decisions, like that's where now we're going to flip switches. And how, can you still invest in Pokemon in 2024 at the start of this year? And the answer to me is a resounding yes. Like I'm still super pumped, super huge on Pokemon. I love it. Um, but you just have to keep all of this in mind that Pokemon Company is in it for the cash. So we could still see a reprint of Evolving Skies tomorrow. If they want to, they can do it. If they want to reprint uh, Cosmic Eclipse, they could easily do it. It's not like they've deleted the files on their computer or in their database. Like, they could easily do it. They could reprint Base Set, for goodness sakes. I mean, they still are, except it says 2023 on it instead of 1999. Um, so... I think it's just a really important thing to keep in the back of your head that Pokemon Company is in it for themselves. It's a cash cow. It's a money-making business, so they're going to keep doing things that keep making them money. Uh, the other final examples I'll talk about before we switch gears into can you invest in 2024 is like you look at the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection. You look at the uh, Scarlet and Violet 151 Ultra Premium Collection. Both of those have been printed so much that, I mean, 
are they even collectible anymore? Arguably, I think they're really collectible in terms of like the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection was a great purchase when it hit its uh, like its valley because you get a bunch of cool Sword and Shield sets out of it. You still get the Charizard promos, uh, so pretty cool. Same with the Scarlet and Violet 151 Ultra Premium Collection. You have 16 packs of 151, which is an amazing set. And you have uh, the three promo cards, which are really cool as well. So they're cool investment ideas, but they're printed so much that they're not really that rare. Whereas the Celebrations Ultra Premium Collection actually like was kind of short printed, it seems like. Uh, but then again, you, coming back to it, you still got to find a buyer for when that product increases in price. So let's flip the switch. Can you still invest in 2024? The reason my answer is a resounding yes is because like to me 2023 and now moving into 2024 is like a total buy period for Pokemon feels like everything is kind of like on the dip right now like so you look at uh, brilliant stars on TCG player for a long time it was like already at $180 then it's dropped down to 130 140 now it's like 150 I believe uh, but you can still buy that at MSRP on Pokemon Center. You look at Lost Origin and Silver Tempest. It had that reprint window where booster boxes came down and they were like in the $120 range. Uh, you look at all the Scarlet and Violet booster boxes and Paldea Evolved this week when I checked, it uh, has finally come back up above $100. But the other three, so Scarlet and Violet base set, Obsidian Flames, Paradox Rift, all below $100. I mean, you are buying these at like less than wholesale price sometimes. It's absolutely crazy that stores and online retailers are wanting to move this product out to make room for more stuff. So you can get these at super, super cheap. Here's the reason this is important. If you buy a Scarlet and Violet base set booster box for $90 right now, I mean, I could totally see someone wanting to pay for it to build their collection uh, they could pay $180 in a couple of years from now when Scarlet and Violet base set isn't really around much anymore. Uh, can you see someone paying, like, I've seen it in local game stores before, like there's a Hidden Fates Ultra Premium Collection, but it's got like a $900 price tag on it. It's like, ugh, that is a lot of money. Uh, like, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that people might not want to buy huge products like that but when you're trying to build your collection of booster boxes or something and it's still only $180, so that's really only, at what, $20 over MSRP? It's not that bad, but you bought it for so cheap that you're actually making a nice gain on it. So you have to look at the percentage gain. Sometimes, like seeing big price gains, I talked about it a few weeks ago. I bought a case of Evolving Skies. And I paid $3,000 Canadian, so we're changing the uh, currency a little bit here. But 3000 Canadian. I am a huge believer in Evolving Skies, uh, and I just really wanted it for my collection. But am I going to see a 100% gain on that? So am I going to sell that thing for $6,000? Maybe, but uh, I'd be probably a lot easier to make the sales if I bought $3,000 worth of Lost Origin booster boxes and saw those double to like $300 booster boxes rather than seeing a $500 Canadian booster box turn into a $1,000 Canadian booster box. I think, I hope that makes sense. Like you got to look at the percentage gained uh, rather than just the monetary value gained because you could spend the same amount of money on anything. So I sp spent $3,000 on Evolving Skies or I could spend $3,000 and have a lot more Lost Origin booster boxes, both of those are going to see gains over time because there's just that law of supply and demand. Uh, so which one is going to have a bigger percentage increase, not just a monetary value increase? So that's where I'm at with investing in 2024. Like we're still seeing this buy period where you have Scarlet and Violet base set, you have Paldea Evolved, you have Obsidian Flames, you have Paradox Rift, uh, you have them for really, really cheap. They're all under $100 other than Para or Paldea Evolved. You also were getting into this territory where now might be the perfect time to start stocking up a little bit on Sword and Shield booster boxes where Chilling Rain is still like right around MSRP. Fusion Strike still right around MSRP. 
Brilliant Stars, Astral Radiance, Lost Origin, Silver Tempest, all right around MSRP. Not even talking about Crown Zenith yet, which is below MSRP. And, uh, like, I mean, it just got the reprint. But all of these sets, we're moving further and further into Scarlet and Violet era, which means based on, uh, like, past experience and past, like, knowledge of what Pokemon Company does, uh, once you get, like, into uh, the next era quite a ways, they kind of start forgetting about the last era. So, like, once Fusion Strike and Chilling Rain and Evolving Skies were out, like, did you see lots of Sun and Moon being printed anymore? Not really. Like, th you could still find the occasional thing, but it was really, really starting to get scarce. And I think now that we're moving into kind of like the middle era of Scarlet and Violet era, or the middle period of Scarlet and Violet era, we're going to start seeing Sword and Shield, like, be a thing of the past. And I think those investment opportunities right now, like, right now is the time to look where Sword and Shield era stuff is going to be in the upward trend over the next like two to three years because you it's already been out for two years so in that like my opinion of investing collecting five to ten year window so we're already two years past when that sword and shield stuff came out so now you've already had a two-year head start where it's at the same price if you would have bought it right when it came out you would have just been holding it for i can i mean you didn't really make any money holding it for that amount of time so now you're two years ahead into the process and now two to three years from now when it's a five-year-old set might actually be worth some money so what i'm trying to say in a long roundabout way it's kind of long-winded so hopefully you're not bored uh is that right now early 2024 seems like a buy period like you should be purchasing stuff things are at all-time lows things are below msrp things are below wholesale price in some cases uh so kind of crazy um so in full roundabout fashion does pokemon care about collecting and investing my short answer was no my long answer is yes they kind of care about collecting because otherwise there wouldn't be those alt arts there wouldn't be the special illustration rares there wouldn't be the illustration rares there wouldn't be the trainer galleries um, there probably wouldn't even be like full arts compared to just regular EX or V cards. Uh, however, investing, I just am not convinced that Pokemon gives a rip about the Pokemon investor. I think they care more about their player base for the TCG. I think they care about their cash flow. I think they care about people are buying our stuff. Let's continue printing it and make sure that everyone can get their hands on it. Um, so that's my take. I want to know what you think about all of this stuff. Let me know down in the comments below. And of course, it's my Friday video, so we got to open up some packs. So I'll see you on the flip side. So yeah, let me know what you think. Ultimately, at the end of the day, like I consider myself a collector and investor just because I love Pokemon so much. So at the end of the day, even if all of my investments, so to speak, are don't gain anything, I have a really cool collection. I love ripping into Pokemon packs, so I mean, it's kind of just a win-win for me, and to be able to see some gains on my stuff also makes it kind of a lot of fun as well. So let me know what you think. I got 10 packs of Lost Origin because if you've been following my channel for any amount of time, you know that I'm trying to break the curse. I still have yet to pull an alt art from this set, which seems outrageous to me, but maybe today is the time, so hopefully. Um, I don't even know what to say anymore. Kiram. Oh, starting off with a hit. Um, but, yeah. I think it's just, uh, really, like, it's a good thing to keep in the back of your mind, like, to know what Pokemon Company's intentions are. Because, literally, they could reprint anything at any time if they want to. Like, they're the owners of the business. So if they think a reprint is in order, they're probably going to do it. And that might hurt your investment. The other thing that I think is really important that I didn't say in the, in the video is it's a really good idea to think about what, like, in two to three years from now, what do I think people are going to want to buy? Like, are they going to want to buy Paldea Evolved? Are they going to want to buy the Celebrations Ultra Premium Collection? Are they going to want to buy Evolving Skies? 
I mean, because ultimately you have to have a buyer to sell your stuff or unless you're just like collecting and then you never sell your stuff, which is a whole nother, um, whole nother ball game where you need to figure out, oh man, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's the Giratina, but you never know. Three, two, one. Yes, sir! The curse is broken. Oh my goodness. Let's freaking go. The curse has been lifted. Aerodactyl. V. Altart. Unbelievable. Well, I mean, it's a good video now. It is a good video now. Holy cow. Finally, pull an alt art out of this stinking set. And it is a total banger. The second top card of the set. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, I'm speechless now. Arcanine. And another Kiram. Okay. Okay. So this is like definitely a good video uh we got four hits plus an alternate art yowza yowza all right and still five packs left to go holy smokes holy smokes plus i kind of lost my train of thought so i don't remember what i was saying because when the aerodactyl comes it's just yeah speechless let's freaking go baby I just, I'm in shock. The curse is lifted. Literally, I've opened tons of Lost Origin packs and never anything to, never even like sniffs at an alt art. I mean, obviously there's some gold cards that have happened, but there's not gold cards, silver border cards, but it's always just the full art. And, but now can no longer say that. <sighs> like a sigh of relief a sigh of relief all the code cards upside down can't stand it but it doesn't matter especially it doesn't matter when it's a good one because then at least you got like a hope a v-star card of some sort drapion all the hits are just flying right now it's crazy crazy but I don't even care I just care about that we just pulled an alt art aerodactyl what a sick card that is love it anyways back on the investing talk we talked about a lot of things once more I'd highly recommend you go watch that pokey Oz video because I mean he shares a lot of really really cool insight and yeah like I've been saying the whole video. It just is, I think it's really important to recognize that Pokemon Company is in it for themselves. Like, they, I don't really think, care whether or not you make money investing in Pokemon. So, that's good knowledge to have. This is the last card. It's been an excellent video already, so it doesn't really make any difference. But three, two, one. Raichu. All right, check this bad boy out. It's unbelievable. Got the Drapion V-Star. Kiram, Pursuing Arcanine Trainer Gallery. Another Kiram. And then the most delicious card of the bunch, the Aerodactyl. Uh, from Naked Eye, it looks a little off-centered from left to right, but uh, not too shabby. And I like this card. I like it. All right, that's going to do it for me at the Pokey Office. Make sure to hit all the buttons and subscribe and blah, 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 blah if you want to be entered to win the uh, Scarlet and Violet 151 Ultra Premium Collection. Thank you all so much for your support. Make sure to let me know what you think. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and until my next one, peace.